Hello and welcome to episode 3 in our save point tutorial series. In the last episode we worked on our save slots making them be able to be named and take us to the game. In this episode we're going to make it pick a particular spot in the world and level and take us to it and that's going to be determined by the save file themselves so it's going to make sure it's got to load up the correct save file and read the correct information. So join us right now as we get started. Let's run through what's going to happen here. So I'm going to go to our save slot options and we click on it. It's going to first of all if it's empty just go ahead and create a dialog box which is going to add to viewport. In the dialog box it's going to go through and take our committed text and tell it to load the save game. When it's doing this the save game instance is going to load it up and has it stored in the current save data. Okay, it's going to just do that. And what it's going to do is either load the game from a slot if it already exists or create a new one. Most of the time it'll be creating a new one because it's empty anyway. So it does that it'll go ahead and create that reference there which we now have then we've got this save to slots over here we then want to go to our back to our dialog box and then it goes on to setting it all, all on the save slot options and so forth so then when we do that it's going to go back to the menu showing the save slot options and when we click on it again the save slot option will now go to false then it open the level that we want now what I'm going to do is be able to save between games the save slot string on each option. Now on our save game instance we are storing this in this array on the game save data. We just need to tell our game save data here to save itself to a slot so that it can then um, save those strings and then we can call them up later. So once we add this new string to it We'll take this save. We're going to do save game to slot. The save game object is going to be our game save data. And the slot name is going to be coming from over here, our game save data from the last episode we did. Put that in our save slot name, like so. So that's now saving this array to this game file. Now we want to talk about when we load the game at the start. So when we load the game at start, we've got this game save data here. We need to populate our options with the correct slave save slot string in that array. So we're going to go to the main menu and take a look at our designer view. We need to take these three, putting them into an array that we can then set the save file names correctly in the correct location. So let's take our graph here and look at our save slot options one, two, and three. And on the pre-construct, we're going to take those three out. Like that. And we're going to make an array out of it. And we'll store that array as a variable. We'll call it um, save slot array. Then on the pre-construct still, we're going to get the game instance passed to our save game instance. Plugging that in. And then from there, we can get our game save data, which has the array of strings on it. Get the save slots. And what I want to do here is I want to take the save slot array out, get, and do a for each one. And for each slot, we're going to drag out and do set slot string to the same index in this array here. Do get copy and plug that in there. To there. And then we are setting the correct string to each slot appropriately. And that's going to happen on the pre -con uh, construct, meaning it's just going to load up with that stuff already done for us. We don't have to do any extra work there. So let's test that out. So I call this middle one here Ryan Save Data. I can then click on that and it'll take me to the level. If I were to play the game again, 
click on the button again, it'll take me to that same level because the string is set correctly. All I have to do now is make the text on the side of the screen uh, look like the slot name. So on the slot options here, when we on the pre-construct this, we're going to take the slot name, get, and we're going to set text. And we're only going to do this if the save slot string is not empty. So you drag this out and do not equal to nothing and put that into a branch. And the in text then will become equal to the save slot string. So let's test that out. And it hasn't worked. Uh, the reason why it probably hasn't worked is because this is happening before it's had a chance to load up the information. So all we're going to put in there is a little delay. Stop it from happening before that. Hit play again. Start game. And there you go. Ryan's save data is now showing correctly. I click on that. And it will take me to the level. Okay. So next thing to do is make it so it takes me to the correct level and save point name based upon our save data. So we're going to go into our save slot option and take a look what happens when we click it. So we've got open level by object reference. I'm going to take this off and instead we're going to use open level by name. And we need to know the level name we want to load up. This will belong in the player save data. So let's add a new variable to this and we'll call this one level name. And it'll be a name object type or name variable type. And we want the default level name here to be the name of the level we're trying to load. So we'll get that. And set that to the default value on here. Again, so we don't get any weird issues. Uh, I mean, it's null. Okay, so uh, when we do that, we need to know the save point name as well. That will come through. That doesn't matter if it's null or not. That's fine. But that's what we need to do. So now we go back to the uh, save slot option and we need to get the game instance and cast to our game instance, cast to our save game instance. And from there we can get the current save data. And that contains our level name as well as our save point name. So we're going to plug those each into our level name and options appropriately and connect it all up. Now, if this works, it should take us to that level as the starting level. It won't use any save point, it'll just use the, the standard one. And, and so, uh, oh, sorry, for, before we do that, we have to, take, to actually load the file. So we don't, from the reference here, we've got that load save function we made into there and that goes into there and this slot name go into there it actually has a file to load from it and save and and then finally the last thing I want to do here is I want to go to our uh, menu controller and tell it to show the mouse cursor so we can actually see what we're doing but right, I'm going to place in standalone um, and see how that works. Okay, so I click on start game. And that'll take us to our save file. And you can see it's where you got it here. And click on Ryan save data here. And there you go, it's taking us to the correct level. Okay. So now it's the act of making it pick the correct player start. So at the moment we are we haven't got our save game uh, objects in the world working. 
uh, but what we'll do is we'll hard code it in for now to show it working so i'm going to go into our game mode for our third person character and open the full blueprint editor <clears throat> and on here i'm going to go to functions override and do handle starting new player when it does do this i'm going to drag down from new player to find player start and the incoming name here will be the option string that comes from our load up here so option ring and if you, again if you want to watch more detailed information about this system and how it works i've got videos on that um but for now all you need to know is that the option string comes in with a query identifier which is a question mark uh, so we need to remove that in order to pass it through to here so what we want to do from there is get a substring from it so i'm going to get substring um starting index is going to be one and the length of how long you want to cut out of we need to get from the option string I'm going to do the length of this. And that's going to be minus one because we don't want to include the first one again. Minus one. And that'll go into length. And that'll get us the player start that we are looking for. We then want to re restart the player at a player start. Plug that in through here. And the new player is going to be the new player from our event. And the player start spot is going to come from the return value there. Compile and save. So what it means is if there's nothing given to any options, it'll just choose the empty one. Uh, otherwise, it'll give us a specific one. So let's set up a test for this. So I'm going to go into my um, player save data and put in a default value in here for um, what, what I have it called. Let's have a look at the map. Can't wait, I'll call them now. So our save point for our market square one is called market square. So we'll copy, copy that. And in our player save point, we'll put a default value of market square. So with all that done, let's test this out in standalone again uh, to see if that will now load us into this map, but also send us over to this save point itself so i just need to test this out now so i'm going to go back to our main menu map and do a standalone game and let that launch and in the menu here we click on start game choose write and save data you can see there's an issue here where it's getting the same one over and over again we'll come back to that in a moment but i'll click on this one here and we now spawn in at the correct location in the correct map as we have discussed so the reason why you're seeing the save game data replicate over and over and over again is because we actually saved the data yet so we're doing loading but not saving so every time we do click on a new uh save file it's treating as if it's a brand new save and therefore storing that but we are saving the names so that's where it's breaking so once we fix that by putting the safe actual saving of the game in there uh, then it's a lot it'll fix itself but to handle this is even better um we're going to go into the save game instance here and look at our load save game and where we're doing add here um I just save it. So with the name uh, appearing multiple times, uh, the reason why that happens is because we haven't actually saved the game yet. It's just loading up each time, and every time we click on, say, the save slot option, it's going to load from a slot. Now the slot it's getting from is load is saving itself. So we click on it once, and uh let, let me demonstrate so for example here i am um, when i click on the uh save uh hang on, go to main menu uh oh. go to main menu here sorry um yeah so at the start of this it's going to go through the save data and look at the save slots and set each one 
to the a slot in there but at the moment the slot is just got well it should only have one option in it the reason why it doesn't have just one option in it is because when we clicked on our save uh game instance so now you might be wondering why we saw uh three files all named the same thing now the reason why that happens is because we haven't yet handled the saving of the slot to the game yet so every time we click on it it's treating as if it's a brand new save file hence creating this new save slot so when we go to save slot option here you can see this working um when i do click on the thing here uh, the save slot string wouldn't be equal to nothing so we just cast to the save game instance and load game load game is going to add another string to our uh, thing there this means it's happened twice it's happening here and happening on when we close the dialog box so the dialog box is also call, calling this load save game so this is calling this and then because that save game file does not yet exist it go back to here and do the force again and create another save game file loading it all up and doing all this stuff again so this is why it's doing this again it's never loading the game from slot because it doesn't actually exist yet so what we're going to do is once it's loaded the game from slot we're going to take it to save the game to slot we're going to take the current save game or not, not current not that one sorry to uh this bottom one here create save game we'll take this and we'll tell this to save game to slot and so every time we create a new one we're going to put in the name of the slot well uh yeah every time we click on creating a new save file it's going to save it straight away therefore stopping it from ever calling it again because it already exists um and so that's why we saw that happening now to test this fully we needed to clear our data so we need to set that up uh, properly. But what we do is just go to the project file section on here by going to um, show an explorer. Now bring up an explore window. A moment. And is and we'll go up, up, up to do the save. Go save games. There's a game save data. You can see it didn't save at all any player save data yet. But if I delete this, we'll get a fresh start. Hit now play in standalone and see if that fixes that issue for us. <clears throat> okay, so we'll go and start game. And you can see they're now all blank. I click on the middle one, ask me to name it. So my new save. Enter. Now it appears. Button. And that'll take us to the marketplace spot in that level. Like so. And that saved it automatically. As soon as we loaded it, it saved it. So we can now close this and go play again. See if it has kept that saved data. Now, noticeably in the game, it's not going to do anything at the moment, uh, but it should only now only have one option on there named my save data. So go to start when it appears. And you see my save data now appears there. Nowhere else. Click on that. And take us to the level. We'll do it one more time to demonstrate that it hasn't added any more. Start game, and there you go, my new save is the only one that's there. And there we have it. And that's it. In the next episode, we're going to go over and show how to make the save points work. So we go up to a save point, push E, that gives us a little dialog window asking us if we want to save our game. Click yes, and it will take us and out of the game and save it there. So we can save our points dynamically. So join us on the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely where you can catch that episode plus many others before anyone else. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.